really are ridiculous. <laughs> Utterly. I ain't never been to a ball in my life. Nor have I, if I am being honest. I used to quite often. There could be fine pickets. Oh, no, 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 no pickpocketing. We are here to make real contact. What kind of contact? Well, I don't know. We'll find what we can. All I know for sure is we are going to a party at the mayor's house, and the guest of honor is the worst crook in town. <laughs> I am sure that we will find something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, Luca, I'm afraid the mayor does not allow guns at official functions after last year's incident. Luca here will take you to Mr. Bronte. I believe he is expecting you. Follow me, gentlemen. This way, please, gentlemen. Senior Bronte will be so pleased that you made it. We are honored to be here. Yeah, that's wonderful, wonderful. That. Come down this way. Uh, what a beautiful evening it shall be. Mr. Brante is a very good friend with the mayor. Good evening, Pierre. Senor Napoli. As long as the mayor behaves himself, you know, Mr. Brante, he has a, the thing, you know, a respect. Jose, Bill, you join the party. We'll meet you out back after we pay our respects to Senor Brante. <laughs> come, come. We'll meet you out in the balcony when you're done. You arrived, and you've washed for the prima volta questo mese, senza dubbio. Oh. <laughs> this is quite a party you've invited us to. Yes, quite something, although I'm not quite sure what. <laughs> so, this is Sandini High Society. Yes, apparently so. And all these people, these are friends of yours, <laughs> Senor Bronte. No, 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 not quite, not quite. But they certainly are afraid of me. Like that one. See that wretch? He's the mayor. <laughs> Henri Lemieux. <laughs> He'll do anything for a dollar, and I mean anything. <laughs> Politics is a foul business. Yes. Oh, and that one too. That is Alberto Fuzar. He owns a sugar plantation out on the island, and he comes here to whore and despoil himself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, and that, that is Hobart Crowley, <laughs> a, a Confederate major in the war. I mean, a hero, they say, but that this is his very young wife. I mean, a young mistress, that's the natural order of things, yes, but a young wife is unseemly. Oh, oh, the Redskins. <laughs> I have no sympathy for them, because whoever is stupid enough to get tricked by the Americans, no, they get what they deserve, huh? <laughs> yes, and a letter to the mayor. Oh, yeah, that'll save you. <laughs> and that... That is Hector Fellows, mm. this self-righteous newspaper man. Maybe, maybe you will kill him for me one day. <laughs> well, we're not paid killers as such, not in cold blood anyway. I did not know you were so particular that uh, you wouldn't help a friend. Oh, I'm willing to help in any way I can, uh, within reason. <laughs> I'm going to pretend to understand what that means. I meant no offense, sir. I'm not taken. None taken! <laughs> All these vulgar people, they hate me. <laughs> non vedo l'ora di guardarti morire! <laughs> well, uh, it has been wonderful conversing with you, but I can tell that you are very busy and I won't waste any more of your time. Yes, yes, yes. Go, enjoy yourselves and mingle with this vulgar scum. It'll make you long for the days when you could shoot each other and screw cows out on the open range. <laughs> <laughs> Those sure were the days. Good day, gentlemen. Mm, good day to you. But before you go, what uh, exactly are your plans here? Well, we've not made any... Well, we, we are going to need some money. Money, yes, of course. But there's, there's money at the trolley station. They keep a lot of cash there in the day. Now, I could not involve myself in such uh, matters. But you, pff, 
As a guest? Yes, as my guest. Bah, do it, huh? <laughs> okay, good day, gentlemen. Goodbye. <laughs> Ok, ragazzi, adesso il vino buono. Sì. <ride> I'll show you to the party, gentlemen, if you'll kindly follow me. Gentlemen, enjoy your evening and welcome once again to Saint Denis. Ciao, ciao. Gentlemen, let's go ingratiate ourselves. Okay. Go find the mayor if you can and stay out of trouble and steal nothing unless it's information. Of course. Jose, you go find us some place to rob. Bill? Go make us some new friends. I'm gonna find out if old Cornwall and what's his name, Milton, knows we're here. Gentlemen, be well. Hello. Ah! Get me a bloody drink, will you? Glass of champagne, sir? Just big enough well, to hello, the length, gentlemen. You know? Featherstone Chambers. Pleased to meet you. Hudson James. What a beautiful evening. Sure. Evening, gentlemen. An yeah, evening where you? wit. Time. How's it going? Very well, thank you. That's good. All the best, then. I get to. The truth is, since the war, the country's doomed itself. I disagree. The war? The war was 30 years ago. I was just a boy. And since then, we have fought more wars. And we will fight more again. Now, the country tore itself apart. I, and what do you think, sir? I think war is a fine way of thinning the herd. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This man is a realist. I cannot believe I am hearing this. Excuse me. Sometimes, sir, the innocent are the damned. Enjoy your evening. I must go see my wife. Good evening. Evening, folks. Monsieur? How's it going? It's going fine. Good. All the best now. Au revoir. This is quite a town that you have here, Mr. Jameson. Oh, I don't live here. I was here for the poker. Oh, you play? Oh, it's, um, it's my weakness, my worst vice. Perhaps you should have it whipped out of you like you advocate whipping the sin out of others. <laughs> <laughs> Evening working, all. Sir, working and How do you do? My vice is between me and my maker. I keep winning. Every gambler says that, Mr. Jameson. <laughs> yes, I know. But like I said, the next big tournament, which I will not be attending, is for a game too rich for my blood. I may be a knave, but I am a sensible knave. That's so. How are you all doing? Oh, sure. I'm not Monsieur. a wealthy man. I run a prison. The old riverboat tournaments are for card sharks and rich fools. A really big stakes game attracts oil men and such, like, you know, from all over. My pockets are not deep enough for that. <laughs> you are a wise man. Hmm. I'm a conservative man, at least. The fact is, since the war, the government has done an awful job of preserving law and order, Mr. Jameson. <laughs> well, I agree, Major. Well, at my prison, we are doing the best to remedy that failure. You know, my friend works in the Caribbean. He faces real rebellion. If we don't act decisively, we will endure the same here. And all of this, all of these garden parties and civility, they will be doomed. I believe in civilizing the masses, sir. But the first order of civilization is order, law, and order. I agree. Without law and order, we will have anarchy. 
But we have too much law and order. Won't we have dictatorship or worse? <laughs> Monarchy. The law should be a dictator. That is the American way. I thought the American ideal was liberty. <laughs> sure. Liberty under the law. Huh. Very interesting. <laughs> Major Crowley, Mr. Chambers, I must go speak to someone Good first. Evening. How do you do? Gentlemen. Bonjour, monsieur. I mean, modern art is all very well, but my daughter could do better. Oh, you're not such a Philistine as all that, Marie. No, I am quite that much of a Philistine. Besides which, Monsieur Chardonnay, he is a... Would you like some champagne? Of course. Thank you, sir. You are quite the gentleman. <laughs> Clearly not from this swampy hell. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies, I'll see you next week. <laughs> Hi there. Hello there. You're walking away from history, you fool. Women and men both deserve to decide the future. This is meant to be the land of liberty, but somehow I am not free to vote. You look me in the eye and tell me in all honesty that I am not the equal of any man you've ever met. You're preaching again, Mrs. Wicklow. And you're burying your head in the sand again, sir. <clears throat> Don't blame me for God's mistakes, if they were mistakes. <laughs> what do you mean? Women are inferior to men, madam. It's not my fault, it's a fact. Undeniable, demonstrable. I will not deny it simply because of fashion. I'm intrigued, sir, to hear your arguments. I am your clear superior. You're different, but you're neither my better nor my inferior, sir. Okay, madam. I will not prove it by publicly thrashing you. Uh, well, I, you're stronger than me, sure. But as civilized beings, haven't we moved past that? <laughs> Apparently not. Good evening to you, sir. I will go find some other people to threaten to hit me, if that's okay with you. Did you hear what that man said? Inferior. Do you think women should have the vote? Oh, I don't care. I've never voted anyway. Well, that's no better. Anyway, if you'll excuse me, I'm still furious with that oath. Je vous salue. Hello, mister. Evening, folks. Can I help you, sir? Well, I'm not quite sure yet. Hello, sir. Albert Daniels. Brent Tilden. This is Mr. Hector Fellows. Mister? Well, it's nice to meet the boat. I'm sorry, but you can't be serious. That war is preferable to peace? That's not what I've said. It is sad times we live in. From the West. I mean, it's open. Your friends? Sorry. Richard. I'm from Quebec, sir. But I left many years ago. You? <laughs> no. I came down from New York for a job. I'm a banker. A banker? An investment banker. You're the fellows who never lend me money when I need it. And when I've got too much, try to lend me more. <laughs> How are you? And what do you do, Mr. LaFon? Hello. Originally furs. But now all sorts. Lumber, leather. Even maple syrup. <laughs> oh, of course. You shopping too, sir. You don't sharpen up your morality. I'm trying, sir. I'm trying. I've tried harder. Much harder. Why would you win? <laughs> you hit the man. Rangers. <laughs> These nails are... Well, uh, <laughs> It ain't complex, am you? And only an idiot like you, buddy, would try to make it so. I will not deny idiocy, sir, but perhaps now is not the time. <laughs> Typical pansy! You are drunk, Ferdinand. <laughs> I'm not drunk, you fool. 
but this man, this man loves darkies. <laughs> hey, you are pretty drunk. Yeah. What say you and me cool off? <clears throat> Get your hands off me. Come on, sleep it off. Sit down and calm down. Count to a thousand. Then you can rejoin the party. Is that who's salute? Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Henri Lemieux. I hope you're enjoying my party. The mayor. Allegedly. There's quite a place you got here. <laughs> it's not mine, and the city is horribly in debt, but we can still put on a good show. Do you know Evelyn Miller? My lord. The writer? Well, we seem to have another deranged drunkard on our hands. Shall we? Oh, oh, oh. My lord, they're fantastic. Mr. Cornwall was quite insistent, I'm afraid. Uh, he shouted down the telephone for several minutes. Mr. Cornwall is a horse's ass and a bad horse. I'm very sorry, sir. Uh, it's not your fault. I'm a fool for trusting him. I'll come in and sign it in a minute. Let me enjoy the fireworks. Of course. Please say something about Cornwall. Yes. Find out what. Everything's fine. We have the place well secured. Good. Mr. Bronte has a habit of wandering about and reading whatever he likes. <laughs> We're watching him and his men like hawks. Thank you, Mr. Terry. Taken care of the telephone, it keeps ringing. The mayor said he will sign later. <sighs> Marie, Marie, find that little reprobate chip and beat him. I will not have standard slip in this house. <sighs> have you lost your mind? I said, have you lost your mind? Come here. Come here. Look at me. Look at me. Who do you think you are? This area is not meant for the likes of you. You know this. The standards in this house are slipping. This is a final warning to you, miss. A final warning. Now get out of my sight. Mr. Leviticus Cornwall. 
top secret, extremely confidential. Very interesting. Waste of time. Maybe not. I think... Gentlemen, I think we're done here. What did you find out? There's plenty of money moves through here, of course. And I, I think I found out how we can grab some of the big bank. Real one, I mean. But not yet. A city bank? Maybe. And a stuffed one. If we're gonna leave. That could be the one thing we need. There's also that trolley car station Senor Bronte told us about, and I heard about a high-stakes poker game. Come on. Here comes Lenny. All right. Let's get in. Go home! I ain't never felt so awkward in all my life. All them folk all so pleased with themselves. Oh, high society pigeon shit. If you ask me, it's more like torture. Well, that's sort of the point, isn't it? Let the people torture themselves. Here's them papers I took. Uh, let me see you take this. I don't think so. Hmm. I might have an idea. Let me think on it. 